Hardware wallets are the safest way to store your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. However, over the last few months, we've seen hardware wallet exploits where hackers can remotely sweep all the funds from a Bitcoin hardware wallet. These exploits are made possible by something called entropy. If you look up entropy in the dictionary, you'll get like five different definitions that all basically mean chaos and randomness in a universe. But what the Sam Hill does chaos and randomness have to do with hardware wallets? A hardware wallet is secure because it's never been connected to the internet. But at the end of the day, all a hardware wallet is doing, just like any other Bitcoin wallet is generating one really big random number, also known as a private key. And if someone else generates your same private key, they can take all of your Bitcoin. This can be a huge problem depending on how your Bitcoin hardware wallet is generating its random number. And without getting overly mathy about it, there is no such thing as a 100% random number. Basically, humanity has put a man on the moon, built giant skyscrapers, and invented chicken nuggets, but we still can't make truly random numbers. And so what a lot of random number generators do is they take in this entry to make their random number generation process more random. At this point, if you're like, Rhett, this makes no sense. I still don't understand what the entropy is. Please just talk like a regular person. Let me give you a concrete example of entropy and its effects on random number generation. All right, guys, so I'm here in VS Code and I have two demonstrations here pulled up that are gonna show you exactly how random number generators work. So what this first example is doing here is it's calling the random number generator five different times in this for loop, and then it's going to print that random random number and that random number is going to be between one and a thousand. So if we go ahead and clear the terminal here and then we just run this function, we should see that we've gotten five different random numbers and these numbers are, you know, 388, 199, 862, 470, and 599, which is exactly what we're expecting. We're expecting five totally different numbers between again, one and 1000. But now if we pass in a number to the seed function, let's say we pass in my favorite number 42069 and we save this and we run it again, we can see that every single time based on this number, this seed that I passed into the random function, we got the exact same random number, even though we called the function five different times. And again, the number is still between one and 1000. But every single time we got the same number because we passed in the exact same seed. What's happening here in this previous example where there's no number passed into the seed function, and we're getting, you know, a uniquely random number every single time is the computer is generating its own number based on the system time on your computer and maybe the MAC address of your computer and other internal hardware pieces of information of your computer. It's passing all of that turned into a single number into this random seed function every single time. And so every single time that it runs, it's getting a new number. But when we pass the exact same seed in here, so if we give it five or really any number, let's go ahead and save and run it again. Now we're getting 638 every time because every time we seed this function with five, we will always get 638. And to further illustrate this, we can come over to the second example here, we'll clear our console so that we've got a fresh workspace. And we can see that if we pass in four to this first seed and three to the second seed and nothing to the third seed. So we're allowing the seed to be generated based on the information of our specific device, which is the way that most programs are able to achieve some sort of randomness. If we go ahead and run this. We'll see that we're getting 242 from the first seed. We're getting 244 from the second seed and we're getting 180 from the random seed. And so let's go ahead and run this again just to show you what's going to happen. We're again getting 242, again getting 244. And then now the third random seed is giving us a real random number or a, you know, close enough to real random number. And we could run this as many times as we want. 242 and 244 will always be exactly the same, but this third number here will be, you know, truly random. And so again, we can run this as many times as we want here, and we're always going to get 244 and 242. But that third number will always be different. So hopefully this is starting to make sense to you. And again, you can pass pass in any number here, it could be, you know, that number. And even though that number is really big, if we run this a couple times, we'll see, you know, this middle number is now 170, we're going to get 170 every single time. So it doesn't matter how big this number is, if the number is exactly the same, you will always get the same random number out from these random functions. And that's because the seed or the entropy that you provide to these random functions, it's sort of like a one way hashing function, and it's turning this seed into this same exact number every single time. And so conceptually, you 
you can think about it and you can see how problematic it would be that if this function here was generating your Bitcoin private key, let's say we want it to generate a number between one and a billion right here. If we save this and we do this again, it's gonna give us this 1781 blah, blah, blah number. It's gonna give us that same exact number every single time that we run this function. And so if somebody knows this number, this entropy number that you seeded your private key generation with, they can infer what your private key was if they know how this random function was working. And so if you seed your function with something like five, it's gonna be really easy for someone to find out what this number here is. And even if you seed the number with like your phone number, right? If that was your phone number, every single time you're gonna get that exact same random number. And so it becomes very important that you're not picking some number here that's super easy for somebody to guess. So next to hopefully make this more tangible for you, I will show you how this works on the cold card. And then finally, I'll cover two solutions, one for people that like really wanna be in control of every step of the process and another for people that kinda don't care and just want something safe. Okay guys, so for an example here, when you're setting up a brand new cold card, you'll see at the top of the cold card, you'll see new seed words. So if we click on new seed words, if you click on 24 word default or 12 word, cold card is going to generate your seed phrase using entropy that you put onto the SD card. And so if you went ahead and did it that way, you're probably gonna be fine because the entropy that was generated generated a huge number that probably no one else will ever be able to generate. But if you came down here to 24 word dice roll or 12 word dice roll, and you clicked on this, it's going to ask you to click on your own numbers based on theoretical dice that you have rolled. So one through six here to mix your own entropy. But if you, instead of mixing your own entropy and actually rolling something like 99 or 100 dice, if you just go in and put in your favorite number or you put in your phone number or you put in your social security number or something like that, if you're seeding this random function that is generating your private key on this cold card, if you seed it with a number that you made up and not actually some giant number that no one will ever create again, then your private key is going to be easily derived by people that just go on to cold cards GitHub, look at their random function, and then plug in common, easy to think of, understandable by humans numbers into that random function, and then generate your private key again. And then obviously, once they have your private key, they have all your Bitcoin. So it's important if you are doing this rolls method to actually go roll 100 dice or something like that. And luckily for us, CoinKite has made that very easy by selling a product that is literally 100 dice. And so what we would do here is we would get all of our dice, mix them up a little bit, and so now we have 100 dice and it's very, very unlikely that anyone else with these same 100 dice is going to have the exact combination of numbers that we have here. And it's even more unlikely that if they had this exact same organization of dice, it's even more unlikely that they would pick out the numbers in the exact same way that we would. So there's a three, here's three. Six, six. Five, five two, two, six, six, and so on and so forth, right? And if you went through and you did this with all 100 dice, you would have a very, very, very secure seed phrase because no one is going to create this number that I've just created here probably ever again. And if you want to better understand the math behind why no one will ever create a number like this number that I've just created here ever again, I'll leave a link down in the description to an interesting Twitter thread on the topic by someone who has actually had their funds sweeped off of a cold card because they only did five dice rolls or six dice rolls or something like that. And they didn't go through the process of generating their own entropy using a hundred dice rolls. And if you guys are interested, leave a comment down below. I've been thinking about making a video where I go through, I create a low entropy cold card with maybe five dice rolls or something. And then I just live stream and see how long it takes for Bitcoin that enters that wallet to be stolen from the wallet. My understanding is that these wallets are being sweeped all the time programmatically by people that have just, you know, seeded for those private keys and then programmatically withdraw from any Bitcoin that enters those addresses. And I think it would be really interesting to see in real time how fast something like that takes. You could obviously do this entire process with one dice, but obviously you'd have to roll that one dice over and over again. It's easier to just get 100 dice, roll them once, and then pick out the numbers like we kind of did here. I got that bag of 100 dice plus this dice container from CoinKite. So thank you to CoinKite for sending this to me. And you guys can get this and all the other great products that CoinKite makes using the link down in the description along with the coupon code. I'm 
time working with them to pass along as much of the discount to you guys as possible. Just because I feel like I'm not gonna get rich selling cold cards and it would be better off if like you guys got as much of the discount as you could. I think as of the day this video goes live, the discount will probably be like 5%, but check the description maybe a week or two from now. And the discount should be updated to as much as they'll allow me to pass the savings on to you guys. And now at this point, if you're like, Rhett, wow, like this video has been so good. And like, I love that you love dice so much, but I personally hate dice and think this whole thing is stupid. I completely agree with you. And I think that there's a much better solution for most people that involves exactly zero dice. And that solution is multi-sig. I've done a bunch of multi-sig videos on this channel, but if you're unaware, multi-sig is basically where you create one Bitcoin wallet using lots of different Bitcoin signing devices. So I could create one wallet where I need to sign with three of five different hardware devices to send funds out of that one wallet. It's kind of like a safe deposit box where you need two keys, one from you and one from the bank to open one single vault. And I could have those devices be one ledger, one Trezor, one cold card, a Keystone hardware wallet, and then finally just a mobile wallet on my iPhone. That way, if I'm using a signing device whose randomness is compromised, or if I mess up and I compromise the device by not rolling enough dice or by messing up the entropy in some other way, my coin should still be safe because some hacker would need three of these five devices to sign for my one single Bitcoin wallet. And each of these different hardware wallet providers is generating the entropy to create your private key in a different way. And while some of these wallets, like the example that we just saw with the cold card, allow you to inject your own entropy into the seed creation process, other wallets like the ledger have their own proprietary method for creating the entropy and the randomness in your wallet. And I'll leave a link down in the description to Ledger's knowledge base articles on how they create their entropy to ensure that your seed phrase is as random as possible. Just know that if you want full control over the process, you're not going to get that with a ledger and you are going to need something like a cold card and all those dice that we just talked about. So again, just like everything in the security space, there are trade-offs everywhere. In this case, you're trading off security of I'm going to roll 100 dice and make sure that my number is as random as possible for the convenience of not having to roll 100 dice and just creating a multi-sig wallet with a ledger and a couple of other hardware wallets. But know that in this case, you are trusting some of these companies like Ledger to be following the practices that they say that they're following and in generating the entropy for your private key as well as possible, basically. Let me know if any of this made sense or if I lost you at some point along the way. Check out this playlist over here to learn more about multi-sig and check out this playlist over here to learn more about my favorite hardware wallets. I love you all. See you next week. I got that bag of bag of dice, bruh.